What's up guys, it's your boy Damon and welcome back to another Epic 7 video. As you guys know, we're diving into Banshee. Uh, in the last video, I kind of talked about the basics and kind of formulating a Banshee 11 team so you guys can get rolling. Um, as I've continued to make changes to my team, what I wanted to do now is kind of take the opportunity to kind of break down uh, the team functionality and talk about some adjustments that I've made to improve the consistency. I want to talk about pitfalls that uh, I myself have ran into and then maybe if you guys have ran into these pitfalls as well that you guys can adjust your team comp and or improve uh, the quality of your gear to find success. Uh, I had some requests to see my stats for the team composition uh, so we're going to go over those as well so you guys can see those but I'm going to break this down into phases uh, so you guys can see what phases of Banshee you're most likely to fail and things that you guys can take into effect or put into effect to help improve the quality of your team. So without further ado guys, let's go ahead and dive on in. All right guys, this phase is what I like to call first phase. Now first phase is basically you're just dealing with the Banshee. Now the most important part here is of course keeping harmful effects off of your team. So the Banshee herself is basically just going to attack um, essentially, she's going to put two poison effects on your squad. You basically have a very limited amount of time to get those poison effects off of your two party members that they're applied to, uh, or the Banshee will then AoE um, and, and further on in the battle, especially if she applies the Banshee's Curse, uh, can basically wipe your entire team out immediately, uh, which of course would end your run. Now, the ways to get around phase one is to just ensure that, again, you can remove those harmful effects efficiently. Now, before we get into phase two, there's a couple of things that I want to point out, because uh, this is phase two that you guys are looking at. But in phase one, what you guys want to really focus on is if you're having problems getting past phase one, phase one is all about the speed of your supports, okay? So I've corrected this myself by increasing the defense and the HP overall, and we'll go over stats here uh, for my Ject and my Rin in the front line, because in the last video you guys see me using Shadow Rose, but I made some adjustments and started using Rin. Um, and then by increasing the speed and of course adding Wondrous Potion uh, to one of those healers or both of those healers or Spirit Weavers or Soul Weavers or whatever you want to call them, uh, will allow you to consistently keep those harmful effects off of your team. Now the big thing is, if you guys are going to be running Ject, Ject is just kind of one of those things and we'll get into this when we get into the stats of, uh, <laughs> of my Ject. Uh, Jack is one of those heroes that I really want to put uh, skill ups into for a skill two to get to 100%. Uh, but then at the same token, I kind of want to wait till I get the Wondrous Potion. Uh, but it's it, it's kind of a catch 22, right? Because I don't really want to mola a hero that I'm only going to be using for one instance of the game. Uh, but when he does decide that he doesn't feel like removing harmful effects, it pretty much can cause a wipe. Uh, like I said, the way to really offset this is to really focus on uh, maximizing the speed of your team. So before we get into phase two discussion, which is, uh, you know, dealing with the four Banshees here, let's take a look at some stats uh, so I can show you and we'll kind of break this down and again, touch more on improvements that I made on my team uh, to ensure that they stop wiping in phase one. All right, guys, so here we have my team. Uh, we're going to kind of break this down. First, I'm going to look at the weakest link of my team composition, which is, of course, Jack. Now, <clears throat> what I'm kind of doing is slowly but surely, I'm kind of, you know, plussing his gear. Uh, before, it was just a matter of just not having enough stats. So, as you guys can see, as a five-star, especially since I probably won't six-star Jack, then this is why I'm thinking about maybe putting some Mologoros into his skill, too. Uh, his defense is really, really low, okay? And once we show a unit that doesn't really die anymore, I'll talk about the differences and give you guys some goal stats to aim towards. Uh, but with the 739 uh, defense here and the 7,443 uh, health, um, he has a pretty high chance of dying. Well, I won't say high chance because he doesn't die that often. He just dies more often than the other members on the team composition. Again, the most important part of um, Banshee 11 is keeping those harmful effects off of your team consistently. And if you're able to keep them off consistently, then you're good to go. I mentioned before that adjusting the speed of your heroes, uh, specifically your supports, the ones that, let's say, if you're running Ject because you only have one Wondrous Potion like I do, because I have one maxed out Wondrous Potion, I don't have an extra one. Uh, so I'm, I, ch I opted for Ject just for the easy piece. Could you run a super fast DN? Of course. Uh, but the thing that I didn't like about DN, especially uh, working it out early on because my Rin, I don't feel as fast enough just yet. 
um, is that if she doesn't use her skill two at the well time moment, things could go horribly wrong and then your team gets smashed. So in order to kind of close out that RNG a little bit, tighten that RNG up a little bit, uh, I wanted to opt for Jack. So as you guys can see here, he's at a 181 speed. Um, his health is a little bit low, uh, a lot of bit low. And then his defense is low as well. So as we continue to max his gear out, uh, I'm going to try to get a, get as much stats on him as I can uh, without six-starring him, of course. Because like I said, I don't really want to build this hero just for the sake of using in one instance. So that's checked. So now let's go ahead and take a look at Rin uh, so you guys can get a better idea. So Rin hardly ever dies. Like if she does die, it's like a really weird situation. If like, you know, <laughs> Jack was like, you know what, I don't want to heal anything. Uh, but what I started to notice is uh, she started to get a lot more formidable as soon as we got to about the thousand defense mark. So if you guys are looking for a, a more consistent Soul Weaver experience, you're looking at about 10k HP and about a thousand defense is when I found that I started, it started to get really consistent. Uh, once we got her above 190 speed, uh, which you guys can see here, um, things started to flow a lot smoother. I still want to push her a little bit more so we can get her over 200 speed, but things start to get really consistent. Uh, again, the key thing here, guys, is the maxed out wondrous potion if you guys are not going to be running a maxed out wondrous potion you can do things uh to offset this like so let's say you guys got a lower rank wondrous potion or if you guys are just running jacked uh or if you guys the low rank uh wondrous potion you guys are going to run that on jack you can use heroes that in increase the combat readiness or decrease the combat readiness of the enemy team to kind of offset that some other heroes that are pretty good are like silk uh, just because of the skill kit with the uh, decreased speed or you guys can use dizzy if you guys have dizzy uh, for the decreased speed so you can kind of control the flow of combat a little bit more some other key options that you guys can use for combat readiness manipulation uh, are going to be heroes like lots um, now i know i talk a little about lots and lots is a hero that i've been intending to build for a while uh, but lots is just one of those heroes that you know would heal over time uh, plus the combat readiness. Again, this is going to take some Mulligor investment. So if you guys aren't looking to invest in lots, um, I don't necessarily, I wouldn't say just rush and build them, but I'm just mentioning him because he's a viable option with the 20% combat readiness increase. Also, if you guys don't want to go with the lots because you don't need the heals, another uh, viable hero is going to be Ruzid. Where's my, where's Ruzid at? Ruzid is also a good one if you guys already have a specialty change done because he has a speed imprint. You're probably going to be using him for PvP team compositions, um, you know, etc., etc. And then if you have him fast enough, if you guys have some okay speed gear, you guys can put him in there and that'll offset uh, the need to run as many soul weavers or could potentially offset that because with the extra combat readiness increase it will allow you to give more turns to your team combine that with maybe some attack speed reduction from dizzy because everybody's rocking dizzy right now or silk or pretty much any other or again from ruse if he applies the attack speed reduction uh will allow you to kind of offset that gear requirement or the multi soul weaver requirement and with the multiple turns allow you to purge the poison a little bit easier for your team composition. With phase one, I kind of wanted to give you guys some, an idea to just kind of get those juices flowing. So you guys are really thinking about, okay, like, all right, cool. This is the team that I'm running. Uh, I'm still failing in phase one because I can't get the poison effects off. So I want to give you guys uh, some ideas to kind of float around or some, some kind of stats to work towards to kind of batten down those hatches and get your team where it needs to be so you guys can find success. Uh, whatever units you guys uh, are trying to use as I mentioned in the Banshee basics um, You know the Banshee beginner guide I talked about run that too. So we with the uh, with the wonders potions and stuff like that to kind of get your thing rolling and like I said in this video We really 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 just want to get down to the specifics uh, to kind of help you guys focus So uh, now that we got that out of the way, uh, let's take a look at phase two. All right guys So in phase two now phase two is basically the second phase <laughs> Duh <laughs> phase two is the second phase but in phase two all it is is all about dealing with ads so as long as you're able to kill the ads quick enough um this part is pretty much easy now it gets a little bit tricky here because these ads hit really really hard um if you allow these heroes uh these enemies to to get too many turns because you have basically two full they have two full turns if you don't kill them within their two full turn rotations the bench is going to come back and kill your entire team so here it's pretty much all about damage and utility, keeping your team sustained, 
and then killing them. Uh, uh, Dizzy is really good here, or Arbiter Villager is really good here, or pretty much any other hero in the game, um, wind or water wise, uh, that comes with some kind of chance to miss if you guys are having trouble keeping your team up. Chance to miss is great overall in Banshee either way, just because it kind of reduces the chance that the Banshee will land damage, uh, or if you guys are running any kind of attack rate. Outside of like trying to get into like technical stuff, uh, the easiest way to get through this is to just kill them. Now, the speed of your Soul Weavers, and again, your ability to cleanse is going to be really important here too as well. Uh, another pitfall I, I, I've run into a lot when dealing with this particular instance is when they uh, do happen to get a turn and they apply that poison effect, if you get into a situation where your Soul Weavers aren't fast enough um, or they aren't efficient enough, and they apply poison to your team once you kill them if the if the banshee herself is close to getting a turn she will then attack whatever hero still has poison on them and it could potentially lead to a wipe in your team and this is why managing harmful effects on your banshee team is so so important i say almost more important than any other aspect so once you're able to kind of manage those two phases overall banshee 11 will become a lot easier for you to manage uh, based on what you got going on so the big thing here is improving the hp of your team improving the speed and the defense of your of your soul weavers specifically and then maximizing the damage of whoever it is that you've decided to use i like bike in here you know for you know obvious reasons because she gets a bunch of you know a bunch of turns and then of course dizzy here just because of all the harmful effects makes life easier uh but like i said you could offset this with any other aoe if you have a sid you can use a sid sid can basically take bike in spot um and then with the extra defense break it's nice too as well and pretty much any other aoe target or excuse me any other aoe or high damage hero can take uh, dizzy spot as well so um also as we kind of bring this video to a close i wanted to talk a little bit about um some quick tips here that you guys can use now defense break in banshee 11 is just as important as any other harmful effect in this now the reason i say this is because if you're able to land defense break consistently on the enemy or specifically on banshee the faster you can get her down and the less time you have to be in the fight and the less time you have to manage the harmful effects the faster you can get through uh phase uh, both phases of phase two uh so you know both times she splits the faster you can get those get through those specific things the easier it's going to be um as long as again you're managing the harmful effect states and you don't put yourself or put your team in a position where it could be one shot at. These are some things that I've been finding overall as I've been kind of to continue to tweak and test teams and play with stuff. Like I said, as you guys saw, my beginner Banshee guide, I was working with Shadow Rose. And although I was winning, it was about a 70 to 80 percent. I didn't want to get that higher. So once I started to make adjustments, now I'm at about a 90 to 95 percent just because Jack kind of falls apart, you know, here and there. But um, that's all I wanted to cover today, guys. If you guys got any other questions, comments, concerns about Banshee 11 or uh, pitfalls and stuff that you guys are running into specifically, uh, definitely let me know in the comment box below and I'd be happy to assist. Um, and then once we get those answered, or if you already have a successful Banshee 11 run and you see somebody in the comments that's struggling, uh, don't be afraid to comment because that might help other people in the community as well. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. As always, it's your boy, Damone, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.